Slum 1200 GGI Mob and I'm back. Slum 1200 GGI Mob and I'm back. Slum 1200 GGI Mob and I'm back. I'm back, back. Streets, I am the struggle. Yeah, I'm the struggle. I bleed the streets, I am the struggle. Yeah, I'm the streets. I bleed the streets, I am the struggle. Play the cuts like peroxide, wait in the bubble. Still trapping with this rapping, yeah, I'm going, going in. in. Trying to murder everything, even the patent pen. No witnesses, no survivors. Red cross, Red cross. Glock fire, hot lava, head lost. <laughs> The 12 British mercenaries assembled in Colombia in March of this year. For 11 weeks, they trained for the assassination attempt in a mountain jungle and recorded much of it on videotape. Little by little, the equipment they needed arrived. Arms and explosives made in the United States and a Bell 205 helicopter. The mercenary leader, Dave Tompkins, gave the helicopter a new look. I'm about to uh, change the color of this the United States of America chopper that has made its way here. A second, smaller helicopter came from inside Colombia. Who were they working for? One of the mercenaries who refuses to be identified on camera tells ABC News they were recruited to kill the drug leader Pablo Escobar by a colonel in the Colombian army. We never did any training without the Colombians being there. We had uh, military intelligence, Colombians, uh, RAF from the uh, Colombian Air Force uh, and the Colombian Police Lieutenant. But the lavish country house where they did some of their training looks more like the residence of a drug lord than that of a Colombian official. And there are indications that the man behind the operation was really another drug lord, Gonzalo Rodriguez Gacha, who has deeply penetrated parts of the Colombian military and wanted his rival Escobar dead. Early on the morning of June 2nd, the mercenaries claimed they were notified Escobar was in his compound and took off. The leaders, Tompkins and Peter McLeish, were in Helicopter One with the objective of dropping explosive on Escobar's house in the lavish several hundred acre Hacienda Napoli. The other ten mercenaries were in Helicopter Two and were going to land and attack the house and those inside. The idea was either to kill Escobar if he wouldn't surrender, and if he did surrender, was to capture him, take him with us in the chopper when we left, as our bargaining power to get out of the country. And as we got about 10,000 feet, was the was uh, to shoot him in the head and kick him out of the chopper. But they ran into bad weather. Helicopter one crashed into a mountain. The pilot, a lieutenant of the Colombian police, was killed. And Tompkins and McLeish were injured. The assassination attempt had been exposed. Hundreds of army troops scouring the countryside for Colombia's most wanted man. So far, Pablo Escobar has outfoxed them. Escobar and nine other traffickers slipped out with the help of sympathetic guards. Speculation is Escobar used a tunnel, but authorities cannot find one. The escape is a major setback for the Colombian government, because when Escobar surrendered last year, the Colombians argued they could keep him safe in one of their prisons, rather than extradite him to the United States. Everybody is angry with President Gaviria, his ministers, because all this is a shame for Colombia. It appears Escobar had never given up control of his drug operations. The army was trying to move him because it was becoming increasingly clear that he was also using payoffs and threats to run the prison. He chose who entered, who left, how the jail worked, what happened inside, and he managed uh, a lot of operations, uh, drug operations and assassinations and kidnapping from the jail. In a national address, President Cesar Gaviria said Colombia won't change its policy of refusing to extradite drug traffickers, and he urged Escobar to surrender again. El gobierno le garantiza la vida y un juicio imparcial. Colombian President Cesar Gaviria says, should Escobar surrender, the government will guarantee his life and a fair trial. But the president is under fire. His army blamed for the escape, his credibility staked on capturing the boss of the Medellin cartel. Enrique Pereiro survived an assassination attempt ordered by Escobar. And I consider that it will be uh, useful and helpful for our country, the resignation of the president in this difficult moment. 
On the outskirts of Medellin, the only road leading to the prison is blocked by military police. Army troops come and go, but most Colombians believe Pablo Escobar is long gone. If the government has a plan to find Pablo Escobar, it's a secret. But it's clear the manhunt is centered in the foothills of the Andes Mountains, where Escobar has sought refuge before and might be hiding again. It was here in the mid-1980s that Pablo Escobar built not only the world's foremost cocaine cartel, but also a base of support. The government broke the agreement to not transfer him from that prison. I think that's wrong. They should have left things the way they were and not caused all this commotion. Here, drug money built shelters for the poor. And either out of fear or devotion, Escobar has won friends. Several prison guards are under arrest, suspected of aiding in his escape. Father Rafael Garcia helped negotiate Escobar's surrender last year. Now he's once again urging the cocaine kingpin to give up. Throughout Colombia, there are prayers for peace and the fear that the fragile truce between Colombia's government and its drug traffickers might soon end in violence. David Bloom, NBC News, Medellin, Colombia. Police say Escobar was killed near a shopping mall in Medellin, Colombia. He was shot to death by members of an elite police squad that had been searching for him since he escaped from this prison outside Medellin a year and a half ago. Colombia's prosecutor general called Escobar's killing excellent for the country. U.S. drug agents said it also was good for the United States, where he faced numerous charges. Mr. Escobar, certainly by any measure, has to be considered the John Dillinger of the cocaine trade in Colombia. Pablo Escobar had risen from poverty to build a billion-dollar drug empire, which poured tons of cocaine into Europe and the United States. The Medellin cartel was also accused of waging a bombing and terror campaign against Colombian society. Hundreds of civilians, police, judges, and government officials were killed by Escobar's assassins during the last decade. The downing of a Colombian airliner and the assassination of several presidential candidates were also blamed on Escobar and his associates. In recent years, as he ran from the police and other traffickers who also tried to kill him, Escobar's power had begun to wane. His trusted associates had been killed or jailed. Even his family tried to flee Colombia. In addition, his trafficking organization had fallen apart. Its control over the cocaine trade had been usurped by another cartel based in Cali, Colombia. Drug agents believe Escobar's death will have little effect on the flow of cocaine, but is an important symbol in the war on drugs and will reduce the threat of narco-terrorism for which he and his cartel had become infamous. Mark Potter, ABC News, Miami. And here now, using what we learned then and what we know about today's events, is how the end was accomplished. Cesar Gaviria is the president of Colombia. He talked to us from the presidential palace in Bogota earlier this evening. Uh, president Gaviria, is it true? Is Pablo Escobar really dead? Yes, Pablo Escobar is, is dead. He was killed uh, today in an, by the special brigade of the armed forces of Colombia. They had been hunting for him for 16 months. These elite police troops operating from their barracks in Medellin, led by officers whose identity was carefully concealed for their own protection. What do you think Escobar is there? Yeah. Escobar is uh, in different place here. Operating on tips and their own dragnet plan, the troops scoured the nearby jungles and farms repeatedly, swooping down on houses and setting up roadblocks, hunting for Pablo Escobar, the billionaire cocaine trafficker who killed anyone who opposed him. Judges, police, politicians, including a presidential candidate. This afternoon, the elite force got its man. We received today some intelligence information and the special brigade we formed last uh, in 92 just acted. In fact, authorities had traced a phone call Escobar had made on Monday to a radio station complaining about the treatment of his family using special monitoring equipment supplied by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. The call had come from the southwest part of the city of Medellin, from a house located just a couple of blocks from the soccer stadium Escobar had helped build in the early 80s. The two-story house was surrounded then a commando-like assault began. 
In the past, Escobar had been treated with kit gloves. In June 1991, he had actually surrendered to authorities and been imprisoned, or so the world thought. But his jail on a mountaintop in the Medellin suburb of Envigado was really like a five-star hotel befitting an honored guest, not a prisoner. But the most amazing part of Escobar's pseudo-incarceration was what he did in this next room. There was this platform bed, a stereo set, a VCR, a television set, but it wasn't those things that made this room important. It was this desk. Pablo Escobar would sit down behind this desk and continue to run his criminal empire. In July of 1992, Escobar simply walked away and went into hiding. When today's commando raid in Medellin began, authorities say Escobar and another man first tried to scramble away across the rooftops, then began shooting at police. Both men were cut down in a fusillade of police bullets. Escobar's body was taken to the morgue, where it was identified by his mother. He was 44. President Clinton has called President Gaviria to congratulate him. It means that no matter how powerful an organization is, or how much pain a nation can receive from a criminal organization, or how many people we lose in a battle, we demonstrated the world that we were much more powerful than those organizations. Many observers fear Colombia's other large cartel, the Cali cartel, will now simply step up its own drug production. President Gaviria vows to redouble the fight against the Cali cartel. Talk about the political impact of this. Joining us now from our Boston affiliate WCVB is Senator John Kerry of Massachusetts, who's chairman of a Senate subcommittee on terrorism and narcotics. What do you think about these views today that this is a real blow to what's called narco-terrorism? Well, it is, uh, in the sense that uh, the Medellin cartel, and particularly Escobar, were the principal uh, agents of, of a really terrorist acts. They were the ones who engaged in bombing. They, he was personally the one who engaged in a particular uh, w campaign of terror against the politicians of Colombia and indeed against the state of Colombia. So this is a major victory in the sense that the government of Colombia was under siege. Its own credibility had been seriously tested in the way in which Escobar had been imprisoned and when he escaped it was even more tested. Now they have proven their, uh, their steadfastness, if you will, and in that it is important. But Agents are correct. It will not significantly change or alter the flow of trafficking. It is suggested, Senator, that he wasn't going to be taken alive by Colombian police. Do you think he's better dead? Would he have still been a danger in prison? Oh, absolutely. He was ordering uh, murders from prison, and he was a symbol of the capacity of the cartel itself to act with impunity. That's the most important thing that has happened. The Cali cartel, however, is no less dangerous in the sense that it traffics uh, in equally as deadly a form, but it does not or hasn't to this date chosen to engage in assassination of Supreme Court justices, presidential candidates, attorneys generals, judges, and, and in that regard this has to be re uh, seen as a major step for President Gavria and for the government of Colombia. Okay, Senator Kerry, Massachusetts, thank you very much for joining us. The killing of Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar is sending a tougher message, at least that is the hope of Colombian and U.S. officials. Mr. Escobar was gunned down yesterday, and Colombian authorities say its message to other drug lords is to surrender or you will be killed. An elite Colombian police unit killed Pablo Escobar in a shootout, cornering him here in this house where he had been hiding in the city of Medellin. Police found Escobar after tracing his phone calls. It is really a major victory not only from a practical but also from a symbolic point of view because Escobar was the symbol of violence, of corruption, of murders for the past years. Pablo Escobar had been a fugitive for more than a year and a half after escaping from this prison where police say he still ran his cocaine empire. He has been the subject of innumerable indictments and um, he will certainly not be missed. In addition to running his billion-dollar cocaine cartel, the 44-year-old Escobar was accused of waging a terror campaign. Hundreds of people were killed by Escobar's assassins. Now that he is dead, many are looking closely at its impact on the drug trade. The Pentagon has authorized military units to join the effort to capture drug lords and bring them to the U.S. to stand trial. Among the units to be used, the Delta Hostage Rescue Team. Late last summer, an informant reported that Pablo Escobar, one of the kingpins of the Colombian drug trade, was hiding out at a seaside villa in Panama. 
Defense Secretary Cheney ordered troops and helicopters moved to an American base in Puerto Rico in preparation for an attempt to seize Escobar over the Labor Day weekend. Drug lords are well guarded and officials warned Cheney that American soldiers could be killed. Earlier this week, Luis Arce Gomez, once known as Bolivia's Minister of Cocaine, was captured and brought to the U.S. by a team of Bolivian police and agents from the Drug Enforcement Administration. And Bush administration officials recently asserted the legal right to go beyond law enforcement and actually launch military strikes against the drug cartels. There have been a recent statement by one drug syndicate which said that they would come over here and kill Americans systematically, including government officials. If someone makes that kind of an assertion, I'm going to have to tell my officials, well, you know, you can treat this as an attack. You might be able to exercise force and self-defense.